Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we are taking our vector, our holiday vectors, one step further, and we're gonna be creating these holiday vector wreaths that are kind of automated and so fun to make. So as you can see in front of you, that's exactly what we're gonna be creating in this tutorial. I'm gonna walk you through all the steps and in no time you're gonna be able to create these repeatable wreaths. And you can use the free holiday vector pack that I gave away a few weeks ago over on my blog. I'll leave a link on screen and in the video description so you can go and pick those up. And once you do, just copy them and paste them into your brand new document. Doesn't really matter what document size you're using. So I have these vectors over here and to kind of speed things along and for the sake of time, I'm gonna show you the base of how all of these were created and then you can just replicate it and then follow along afterwards. So let me turn on my little hidden layer here. So these are what make up these rays. So all you need is a few elements in line, as you can see right here. And I'm gonna give you a little tip. So if you don't wanna copy these designs, um, just keep this in mind when you are creating these. So all you're gonna do is grab the corresponding elements from this kit and then position them in a similar fashion as these. So I'm not gonna do that part just for the sake of time here, but I am gonna show you, if you decide to create your own pattern here, your own unique one, um, when you create this, the main thing you wanna remember Remember is, is once you repeat it so I'm gonna hold alt click and as I'm dragging I'm, I'm holding shift and just know that wherever this one ends this part right here actually if I group these together let me group them so you can see where this bottom bounding box ends and where this one begins that's how they're gonna connect so you want to make sure you have elements at the base so this is when they connect together in our little pattern throughout our wreath, um, this is gonna be the connection point. So if I had an element, like if I had, let me ungroup this for a second. If I had this one way down here, then this one, let me group them together again. So this one would end up hitting right here. So I'm gonna have these giant gaps right here. And that's how I know that I need to put a little bit of filler in there. So I've got these little filler elements, these little guys, which help a lot when you're creating a pattern brush like this. Let me backtrack a little bit, get things back to normal here. Okay, so that is the main thing you wanna make sure of. And let me show you, I'll give you a couple more examples so you can see how these ones work. Group these. Because this is really the most important part of this process. Um, if you want a really beautiful, seamless looking wreath like these where it doesn't, where you can't really tell that it is repeating right there. So if I move this one up at the end of this one, so you can see it's gonna hit the tip of this one right here. So this one can actually come down a little further. But that, this little gap right here is where these two are gonna connect. And it's pretty evenly spaced, this space compared to this space. So that's what we're looking for right here. So I was like repeating a couple of them just to see what I'm working with. Um, let's do this one too. So it's gonna hit right around there. And this space right here bothers me a little bit, but it does correspond with this space over here. So it doesn't bother me too much. Um, it feels still pretty balanced because I have this corresponding white space over here. So these are how these ones are going to connect. So that's a nice little test to see if your pattern is going to work out before you even create it. I always do this little exercise before I go into actually making my pattern. Okay, so once you know that it's going to work, your little cluster is going to work, you're just going to take it and you're going to rotate it 90 degrees. So it's facing this way instead. I'm gonna show you the difference between having a pattern brush that begins going up and down versus side to side. So what you're gonna do is, let me group these together, is with these selected, you're gonna come over here to your brushes palette. And if you don't see your brushes palette, you can get to it by going window, brushes and it'll pop right open and you're just going to hit this little icon down here make sure it's selected before you hit this icon though so i'm going to hit it once and i'm going to choose pattern brush right down here and then hit ok so once you have this coming up you want to keep it at original we've got this all okay so all of these settings are perfect and you want to make sure where it says fit that right here stretch to fit is checked and then you're going to hit okay since we're creating wreaths with these, we are not going to be creating corners, which is a bit of a lengthy process when it comes to pattern brushes. So for the sake of this and the holidays, and it's really fitting that these are wreaths, um, these will work the best with circular 
um, paths instead of angled or hard edges. So just keep that in mind as well. So I'm gonna hit okay, and now you can see it pops open right here. Let me rename it so we can just keep things clear. I'm gonna call this new leafy brush. Okay, so now I can create a circle. I'm holding shift as I draw out my circle to make it a complete circle instead of just an ellipse. And I'm going to get rid of the fill on this. So over here, I'm just gonna hit none. And with this circle selected, it's got a stroke on it right now. I'm just going to hit my new brush down here. And once I do that, it drops in my my laurels that go all the way around. And if I don't like the size of these, like if I feel like this is a little too big, with it selected, you can come over here to your stroke palette. You can get to that by going window stroke and it'll pop open. And you just wanna change the weight of your stroke. So if I go a half point instead of a full point, you can see it's gonna reduce the size of each element that goes around my wreath. And if I want to make it even bigger, I can go up to two points and you can see it goes up in pretty significant increments. So just keep that in mind. If you don't like the size, it's really easy to change it. Just come into your stroke palette and you can do it there. Okay, so I wanna show you the difference between having it going horizontal like this versus vertical. So I'm gonna select this and we're gonna create a new brush and you're gonna, you're gonna like what happens here. So if I, I'm gonna do everything the same, except this one is vertical here. So I'm gonna hit okay, and I'm gonna keep everything the same right here, only I'm gonna call this um, vertical brush test, and hit okay. Okay, so I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna copy it, bring it over here, and now I'm gonna apply my vertical one instead of my horizontal one, and when I do that, you can see you can get something really crazy but super cool too. So if you wanted, um, I was thinking this would be really cool on a coaster um, and you could drop some words inside like joy or happy holidays if you wanna create your own custom coasters which could be really fun. Um, so it gets pretty cool when you use a vertical one versus a horizontal one. So just letting you know this is kind of an unconventional way. It's almost kind of snowflakey looking too. Um, so kind of a cool option that you get kind of two types of wreaths um, with just one, one bit of artwork. Um, so it doesn't take much to put these together. So I'm just gonna show you what these ones look like. Um, we'll do the horizontal ones first. And obviously all I have to do is hit pattern brush and hit okay, and then hit okay again. And I'm in really good shape and I can just apply this wreath. And then let's do this one as well. Pattern brush, okay, okay. Let me get that out of the way. Copy this and just apply it. And if I want these smaller, I just go into my stroke palette and reduce the size of my stroke. And then I can get these fun little wreaths right here. And if you wanna drop text on it, I'm using my new font right here called Espresso Roast. I'll leave a link on screen and in the video description. It's brand new, there's two styles of typography and then there's a third style that's symbols and dividers. Um, so you can see the script in the all caps style work really well together. I designed it specifically so you can just drop in type and you already know that it fits really well together having two different styles. So you can just drop in your text now for each wreath um, and you can even make coasters here you can put these on the gift tags or on your holiday postcards whatever you want any kind of stationery okay so let's take a look at what these look like when they're vertical um, just to have a little bit of fun here so let me just make a pattern brush you can see it's so fast and you really only have to create this artwork once and you get two brushes out of it okay so i'll show you what this one looks like that one's really fun let me make it bigger so you can see um, so that's pretty cool. And then this one looks like this and let me make it a little bigger. So yeah, pretty cool. All right. So that is how to create a holiday wreath in Illustrator using the free holiday vector pack piece of cake, really quick and easy, and it adds a really fun element to any of your stationary designs um, this season. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And don't forget to head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com, for even more holiday tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next week.